I welcome everybody. I am here with the fabulous Isabel from Healthy Gut, Vibrant Life. Isabel, thank you so much for being with us today. Oh, thank you. It's, it's my honor to be here and um, to just share information with, with a lot of people out there. So it's, um, thank you. Absolutely. I know that so much has come out recently about how important it is to have a healthy gut and all of the impacts that it has in our life with our health and our emotions and our mental capacities. Can you tell us how you got started in this line of work? Oh, yes, that, um, absolutely. So um, let me start by telling you um, a story or sharing a story with the audience. So um, so there was this woman um, named Joanne, and she is um, in her 60s, early 60s, and she's like 20, 30 pounds overweight and low energy throughout the day, some memory fogginess, and also not sleeping well and have digestive issues. But to her, these things like pretty common for 60, you know, people in their 60s, 70s, and she thought she was pretty healthy because she wasn't on any medication. So, except that she, if she had visitors, she did anything extra uh, out of her regular routine, she was completely exhausted by the end of the day. And still, she's like, oh, no big, no big issues. I'm just going to, you know, sleep it off, take some rest. Um, But one day, she actually developed some chest pain. So some chest pain and also some nausea and cold sweats, and she got worried. So that's still her sign of heart attack. And she thought, oh, wow, um, I better check myself into a hospital. So she did, and she was taken in um, for a night for observation. They did a bunch of blood tests, and everything turned out to be okay, and she took some um, acid reflux medications, and the pain subsided, everything kind of subsided, so she was released from the hospital. So with an um, appointment to see a cardiologist, so she did, she went a couple of days later, and the car- cardiologist looked at her record because she had been to the same medical facility for acid reflux and that sort of stomach problems, and he looked at her file and said, well, it looks like it's stomach issue, it's not, you know, your heart is fine, it's healthy, but Joanne is a very detail-oriented person and very curious person, so she um, looked at her file and said, well, what is that number? That number um, is out of range, it's something called troponin. And the doctor looked at it and said, well, it's just a tab, just a little bit out of range, it's nothing to be concerned, and sent her on her way. So she got up and gathered all her stuff and ready to get out, and she was like, oh, I feel really, she felt really unsettled. So she asked again, well, why would it be out of range if everything was okay? He didn't answer her question, but instead he said, well, if you're um, not feeling comfortable, that's do a cardio stress test where you, you know, run on the treadmill, the machine, and ruled out any cardiovascular problem. And she said, yeah, that seems like a good problem. way to go. So she packed up her things and, and left and came back about um, a few days later for her stress test. So she was walked into the room um, and the administrator, you know, put stuff on her, the little things on her for measurements. So she got on the machine, right? She got on the machine and she was walking and running and nine minutes into the machine on the treadmill, she raised her hand because she couldn't breathe. She just couldn't go on. So before, you know, the technician could do anything, she felt she clapped to the ground. And actually, she never, her heart stopped beating, and she never woke up. Joanne was my mother. So, um, so this is why I'm so into health and um, vibrant health and the gut. And we have the power to take care of ourselves and actually I was really angry you know at the hospital at the doctor at everyone for a long time but then I realized it's really not the heart attack that killed her it's really the stress in life um, the food that she was eating the toxicity in the environment um, everything and not taking health into her own hands that's what killed her. So ignoring, like ignoring the signs, the signs we all have 
signs that shows um, disease. You know, before it becomes disease, it's just not comfortable. It's not easy. So she was ignoring the signs and thinking that, oh, it's normal. It's common, but it's not normal. And so that really hit really hard. Yeah, what an impactful story. Thank you so much for sharing that with all of us. Can you tell us how old you were when that happened? Um, this was only three years ago. Yeah, this was only three years ago. I've already started my nutrition practice and I've been helping her. She was doing little things here and there and she was really, um, she was really an advocate of what I do because every time, she's so funny, every time I go out, she would preach to other people what I preached to her and said, you know, you can't eat that, you can't eat that and do that. And she was already, she, she made some changes. Um, but it wasn't enough. So yeah. it sounds like then you're really on a mission to help educate people to have a healthy body before it's too late, before they get to have those those ranges that are out of range. Yeah, and um, not just that, to help people tune into their body and not just turn off these signs. It's like you, when alarm goes off middle of the night, we don't just pull the battery out and go back to bed. We come around an exam and see, you know, what is going on, what is wrong. So not to ignore these symptoms, but rather tune in and say, well, what is going on in my life? You know, how, what's affecting my gut, my brain, my um, the stress level emotionally? What is going on? Take a, take a breather, step back and, and really listen to your, to your body. So that's what I'm hoping to inspire people to do. Okay. What would you recommend for any of our listeners or viewers for something that they could put into practice right now and start using to help tune into their own wellness and start making some changes? Um, first thing, they they're really simple, simple stuff that each and every one of us can do is, for example, just go out in, go outside in the sun and just soak in the sun for five minutes or take deep, deep breaths take deep, deep breaths throughout the day um, and and feel, connect with people. You know, I, I feel that I work a lot with people nutritionally and work in their kitchen, show them good recipes, but I came to realize that it's really the mental aspect, the mindset aspect that goes hand in hand with eating healthy food. And um, I've told many people that you can eat the healthiest food and not having the right mindset or not having good digestion, everything is kind of down the toilet, like literally down the toilet. So your money down the toilet, actually. And so um, first I worked on, I used to work on nutrition first, but, but now I work with mindset and nutrition hand in hand. It's um, to drink clean water, look at, look around you. What are the toxicities in your environment? And um, first, first of all, it's water, right? Our body is 70% water. So drinking clean water is super important and having some time every single day just to yourself and practice gratitude. And these are not something new. It's not something new, but it's doing it. It's really getting to it and, and do it on a consistent basis and building the habit that's um that's going to benefit you for for the long run and it does take time it does take time beautiful i love what you said like this is nothing new these are all things that we've been told you drink good water take care of your body get out in the sun be around other people who make you feel good it's it sounds so simple and and really what you said about having some kind of gratitude practice something that really allows you to get into that heart space, that mental space. I love everything that you're saying and, and connecting the whole mind body um, pieces for us. Can you talk a little bit more about mindset and how having a healthy gut affects our, our brain development and, and our mindset and our outlook on life? Yeah, yeah. So, um, Serotonin, that's our happy hormone. Now, that's what keeps us, you know, happy and vibrant. And that's 90% of that it's produced in the gut, right? Um, and the liver plays a part of that too. So, and um, our, from our brain to our gut, there is something called the vagus nerve. 
that goes from the brain to the gut, and that's how the gut and the brain communicate. And 80% of the signal is from the gut to the brain. So as you can see, gut really controls our um, um, the mental aspect, you know, our happiness, our motivation. 50% of the